welcome to season four of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, and this season, we'll dive into something we are all familiar with, fatigue. What is it? Why does it happen? Most importantly, how can we fix it outside of this? Coffee. Also, you can enjoy the video version of this podcast on YouTube. The channel is at To Health With That. Can't wait to see you there. This week, let's talk about the first steps with fatigue, which is basically eliminating the obvious. There are some really basic causes of fatigue that can be fixed directly as long as you know that's what's going on. Here are some of the factors to rule out either by yourself or with the help of a few simple lab tests from your doctor. The reason I'm talking about this is because sometimes the parameters that a naturopathic doctor like myself would use to start supplementing or supporting a system, like your thyroid or your iron levels, are a little bit more narrow than the ones that actually define the difference between health and disease. By giving your body more of what it needs in that sort of gray area where things aren't abnormal but they're not ideal can really help. One of the things that is important to look at is obviously your iron levels. And we've talked about this before on the show. Iron deficiency is a classic cause of fatigue that almost everyone's aware of. One thing your doctor might not test in just a basic panel is your ferritin, which is the storage form of your iron. And I think that's actually really important to test. Symptoms of iron deficiency include fatigue pale skin or gums or like the inside of your eyelid. If you pull your eyeball down, it looks super creepy, so I'm not really going to do it. Craving for ice, shortness of breath, restless legs at night, fast heartbeat, dizziness or lightheadedness, and sore or inflamed tongue. In terms of iron, I actually, as a naturopathic doctor, do use the standard ranges, but I tend to flag that low ferritin state. Low or low normal ferritin is worth supplementing for a month just to see if you actually feel better and get improvement. For more on ferritin, check out Season 3, Episode 25 called Iron Levels and Infertility. You may not be making babies right now, but the discussion about iron levels is really relevant. There's also vitamin B12 deficiency or, more seriously, pernicious anemia. So B12 deficiency can obviously be caused by a lack of good sources of B12 in your supplements or diet, but also there are some gene SNPs, such as MTR and MTRR, that can play a part in this. Symptoms look very much like all of the other conditions we're listing here, in that it's primarily fatigue, but also weakness, numbness, increased heart rate, and also some irritability. Interesting. The fix for this is usually as simple as a B12 supplement, but if the B12 deficiency is actually something more complex, like pernicious anemia, it can be harder to treat. Also, if you do have the MTR or MTRR polymorphisms, there's some articles on the blog about that. Check those out to healthwiththat.com. Low thyroid, another classic sleepy sort of condition. Probably your general practitioner will just run a TSH or thyroid-stimulating hormone. The normal range in the U.S. is 0.4 to 4 milli-international units per liter. So 0.4 to 4 is pretty broad. That's a big difference. Naturopathic doctors like myself generally add some thyroid support, even if the TSH is within normal but creeping up above 2.0. Thyroid support usually includes minerals, like zinc, selenium, and iodine that the thyroid needs to do its functions, as well as tyrosine, which can be a precursor to thyroid hormone. Now, if you happen to have a COMT slow or some sort of a higher neurotransmitter state, tyrosine might not feel good to you. It might be too stimulating. Blood sugar imbalances. I know I talk about this a lot, but blood sugar is one of the most common factors in fatigue and it often doesn't show up on the simple glucose screening. So I'm not looking for anything out of range here. I'm just looking for dietary patterns that don't support stable blood sugar throughout the day. I recommend the glucose goddess method by Dr. Jesse in Shouse Bay. Uh, It can make a huge difference to your energy. And in fact, when she ran through a test group with the glucose goddess method, that was the number one improvement that her test group reported, right? Energy. 
It's about changing the way you regulate your blood sugar ups and downs during the day and the way you think about your meals. Sleep apnea. So most sleep disorders are completely obvious to the people who have them, right? They know they can't fall asleep or they can't stay asleep or whatever. The one that is sometimes not obvious, at least to the person who has it, is sleep apnea. This happens when something blocks your airway during sleep and your body rouses itself partially in order to start breathing again. Or if their partner tells them that they snore like a lumberjack, stop breathing in their sleep or gasp for breath in their sleep. Because that, that's important. <laughs> that matters. <laughs> so most folks suspect this because of a deep fatigue. There are a variety of treatment options, but one of the most common is a CPAP machine. There are also some causes of fatigue that you can notice or investigate on your own. They may take a little bit of detective work on your part, but finding the cause of your fatigue is 100% worth it. The biggie, the obvious, right? Sleep stop. Outside of apnea, this one doesn't take detective work at all. You know if you're not sleeping, right? But it's still amazing to me how many people come to talk to me in a one-on-one -on -one consult looking for the cause of their fatigue when they only sleep five hours a night. It, it's sleep, <laughs> right? That is the cause. <laughs> we will have several episodes dedicated to this issue. Carbon monoxide poisoning. This is kind of an oddball, but slow leaks in carbon monoxide in your home or in your place of work can lead to symptoms that are vague and really difficult to trace, especially when the leak is extremely slow and symptoms build slowly over time. So fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath, Sometimes memory loss or confusion. Lots of people will report it as brain fog. Nausea and vomiting when it gets really severe. Chest pain and rapid heartbeat can all be signs. If any of this sounds familiar, have the carbon monoxide tested in your home. The only way to fix this is to eliminate the excess carbon monoxide. If you don't find the cause, you're never getting rid of the symptoms. So it's important to really look at that. MTHFR. So as you already know, if you've listened to other seasons of this podcast, MTHFR is totally my jam. As I've mentioned before, the most reported symptom by people who have MTHFR mutation is fatigue. Other symptoms that can be associated are anxiety, depression, repeat miscarriages, abnormal blood clots, hormone imbalance, chronic pain for unknown reason, allergies, seasonal or just sensitivities, sleep disturbance, kind of everything. <laughs> so if this is ringing any alarm bells for you, there's two options. You can always treat yourself as if you have MTHFR and go through the steps to fix it, right? Because there's no harm in it. It's actually a really nice lifestyle and nice health changes for you, even if you don't have an MTHFR polymorphism. You can also use an at-home genetics test like 23andMe or Ancestry and then download the raw data and run it through uh, the methylation panel at geneticgenie.org. I think that's one of the most user-friendly and readable panels. It'll give you a heap of great information about your genes and show you a few possible causes of fatigue. So tooth infection. If you have fatigue and also a little bit of pain when you chew or discomfort in a particular tooth, it's actually really important to get your dentist to look at that. Infections can happen really deep around the roots of your teeth. They're hard to detect and even harder to treat unless the tooth is actually removed. I had just such a chronic infection for about four years. And during that time, my energy was steadily declining, uh, which is alarming, right? <laughs> and my dentist wasn't ever able to find the infection until the tooth actually cracked in half. Once the tooth was out, my energy rebounded within a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching or listening today. Be sure to like or subscribe or press the button. I don't know. Talk to the gremlins. Tell them you like this. It does help the channel to grow so that more people can have access to this information. Thanks.